90s. How many use the word rad all the time? Okay, come on. There was only four of us, right, in the room. The, the, man, that was so rad. But you just couldn't say it like that. You'd be like, dude, that's so rad. <laughs> it's like everyone was high all the time. Right? Oh, that was rad, man. Did you see that? You know, everyone followed Polly Shore and all that stuff like that. It's kind of crazy stuff, the MTV era. But radical. I, I even had a, how many freestyle BMX dads are in the house? Anybody? Freestyle BMX, you know, I, I, I hear you. I, listen, I, I had the GTs, you know what I'm talking about. I had the Haros. I had, I had the Kuahara bikes. I had it all. And we had a, a, a team, a freestyle team, and we were called the Rad Cats. We're the Rad Cats. And let me tell you something. We weren't too shabby. We got called, you know, like, like, for instance, you would get called to like an Armco park for the, the big Armco type thing, and we would go and we would perform. We had the quarter pipes in our house and all these different things. We broke multiple bones and had many contusions all over our body, but we were the Rad Cats. We were over the top. Rad, if you don't get it, teenagers, okay? Rad is short for rad -ical. Radical, right? So over, over the top. But I want to show you something um, here just in a second. And you can just put that uh, uh, sermon cover up there. There was a guy, have you ever heard of a, a dude by the name of Luke Akins? Has anybody ever heard of Luke Akins? Well, listen to this. Luke Akins loved to jump out of planes. How many, how many anybody here has ever jumped out of a jumped out of an airplane parachute anything like that we've got one we got two you're going to, well you haven't been there yet all right it's coming though all right listen this guy spent hundreds and hundreds and thousands of jumps jumping out of plane well one day last year in 2016 Luke Akins decided that he was going to jump 25,000 feet out of a Cessna airplane without a parachute. That's so rad. <laughs> That's radical. It was so radical. He reached speeds of 120 miles per hour and he landed into a special made net called a fly trap. He said this. This was his word. He said, I'm out here to show. Okay, you got to use that. Okay. I'm out here to show that there are ways of doing things that people think are like insane <laughs> and that aren't able to be done. This dude is rad. And so I want to show you this guy's jump this morning. Check it out. Necessary risk because as soon as I would hit the ground, they'd be like, "Where's the cream filling?" That's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what would happen. That's radical. That's over the top. 
over the top. But listen, we can do some crazy things in this world. I've jumped out of trees and birth, burst both of my eardrums at the same time when I hit the Just some crazy things that I've done. That, sledding and sliding on your face halfway down a hill and for Christmas you have like this big thing down your face. I've done some pretty crazy radical things but listen we can do some insane things physically but spiritually we do some pretty radical things too if we're lucky. And I want you to grab your copy of God's Word and I would like for you to turn to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15 and I want to bring to your attention over these next few moments Someone who I consider to be a rad dad in Scripture. And it says this in verse 11, Luke 15, verse 11. A man had two sons. The younger son got up one day and he told his father, Hey, listen, pops, I want a share of, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. And a few days later, his younger son packed all of his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all of his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. And he persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the young man sent him, and the man sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. And the young man became so hungry that even the pods that he was feeding, the pigs, looked good to him. You're pretty hungry when that happens, right? But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have enough food to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. Well, I'll go home to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, for I am no longer worthy of being called your son, please take me on as a hired servant. Now someone would say, man, that dad was so foolish. What a foolish dad, giving him his son's inheritance and all this. What, what a, listen, you've got to wake up one day and realize that your children have to learn to serve God on their own merit and not do it just because you have the perimeters of the hold of whatever on their life. They've got to serve God because they have a relationship with you. You see, there comes a point in time in their life, especially when they're young and you're, you're training your child up in the things of the Lord, Dad. You're, you're, you're teaching them what it means to be a godly man. Listen, you can even teach your daughter what kind of godly man she's supposed to marry. And guess what? She will marry that person based on what you taught her. Y'all know that? She will marry that person based on what you taught her. Now listen, every, everybody has their own choice. And everybody can make poor decisions. But we have a responsibility to train our child in the things of God. And the Bible tells us in the end, they'll not depart from it. So this guy right here, he was like, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let me enjoy watching the inheritance being given so I can enjoy you spend some stuff on it. Well, he made some poor choices, did he not? And it just so happened the timing was, was bad too because a famine swept through the land. Not only did he live his life squandering everything, his inheritance, everything that his father had given him, not only did he squander it, but you know that the perfect storm. And now there was a famine that came through the lands. And so here is this kid who was a good kid, I'm sure. Had grown up, listen, if he was a bad kid, I don't think his father would have given anything. So he gave him this son, the inheritance. He went off, he squandered it. And now the kid, what did it say? The Bible say he came to his what? He came to his senses. When you come to your senses, that's the moment that you wake up. That's the moment that reality finally sets in. And what did he do? When he came to his senses, he didn't try to come up with some scheme. He didn't try to come up with, well, listen, maybe I can go rob a bank. Maybe I can go, you know, maybe I can go work for this other person over here. Maybe I can. What did he do? He said, I will go back to my father. Why? 
Why would he go back to his father? Because number one, he knows that his father is generous. He knows that his father takes good care of his hired help. And he knows that his father is merciful. Wow, what a great representation of God the Father. That we can wander far away from him, but listen, he's waiting. He's waiting with open arms for us to come back to him. But dads, what an incredible example of how radical this father really is. That his son even wanted to return to him. This kid had confidence in his father. That's radical that your child has confidence in you. But some would say, well, man, he's he's just looking because he's just hungry. He just wants something. Listen, he was willing to take a hired servant's job just to be near the father because the father was so good. That's a rad dad. And I want to share with you some things about what rad dads do. Here this morning. Number one, rad dads run to and not away. You hear that? Rad dads run to and not away. In Luke chapter 15, verse 20, we see, we see this in the New Living Translation. It says this. Remember, he, desi- he, he was going to go right back to his father. And it says this. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off. Now listen. Look at the scriptures. Understand what the scriptures are saying and understand it. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. What does that mean? The dad was watching for his son all along. There were no GPS, there were no phones, there were no text messages, there was no email, no Facebook, no social media, no Instagram. Hey, Pops, I'm on my way back home. His dad was, when he was a long way off, how did the father, a long way off, there were no such thing as binoculars, there was no video surveillance, How did he know? You see, because a rad dad, a good father, will understand what the walk of their child looks like. They will know their characteristics even from a great distance away. A rad dad, someone who loves you unconditionally, you will see them coming a long distance away no matter what they've been through in your life. That's why you can see your phone and it says unknown. And that's why when you pick up the phone and someone, just by the very sound of their voice, you know who they are. They don't even need to say it. Y'all with me here today? Is everybody sleeping? All right? Red dads run too and not away. Look at this. So the dad saw him come, coming a long distance away, and he was filled with love and compassion. Again, this dad didn't know what had happened. This dad didn't know that he was hungry for the pods that the, that, that the pigs were eating. This, this dad didn't know any of that stuff. He didn't know. But he was filled with love and compassion. And he ran to his son. He embraced him. And he kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I've sinned. Daddy, I blew it. Daddy, I blew all the money. Daddy, I lived my life wrong. Daddy, I've, I, I, I didn't live my life according to to what you said, God, uh, Dad, I, I, and we can pray this way, Father, I've blown it. Father, I've sinned against you. Father, I've, I've not lived my life according to what your word tells us to. I've not done it. I've, 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 I've blown it. I, I'm, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. You see, red dads run too and not away. You see, the world, I have seen parents, I've seen parents call their children horrible names. I've heard parents sit right at the table with me and say, this person is an idiot and it's their own son and their own daughter. I've heard it with my own ears and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, don't we understand that we're cursing our children when we do that? We're recognizing the fault. You see, we spend way too much time recognizing the faults and never recognizing the wins. Think about it. Go back right now how you parent and go back and think about it. What do we do? If your child's not picking something up and something's left, we correct the wrongs, but we fail to state the rights. We have become experts in pointing out the negativity and 
fail to point out what is positive and the wins in our child's life. You see, what gets pointed out is going to get repeated. But we think just being negative all the time. This father, he didn't, the word of God didn't say one thing. Father, father I've, I've sinned against you. I've done all this. I've, I've, I've blown it, man. I've, I've lived my life wrong. I've, I've, I've committed sexual immorality. I'm doing, doing all these things, and I've done what I know is wrong. And what the world would do is like, see, I knew that you would do this. I knew that you would do this. You're nothing but a worthless, lazy bum, and I have given to you, and now you squandered half of it. Doesn't say that at all. Doesn't say that at all. Kissed him and filled with love and compassion, he ran to him. You see, your heavenly father will always respond to repentance, and that's what this son did. The son went in, Father, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against both you and heaven. I don't even even be, be called worthy to be your son anymore. I'm just a, just a, a humble servant. And you, Listen, your heavenly father will always respond to repentance, and that's what this son did. That's what this son did. James chapter 4, verse 8 says this, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. It's not running away. God runs towards you. Psalm 139, verse 1, it says this, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit. You know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Can you see that? What a good father. Before a word on my tongue uh, is, is, before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your heavy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. And that's the first characteristic of a rad dad that I want you to understand. Being a father is a privilege. It's an opportunity. So many people squander it, but a rad dad will run to and not away. Can I get a witness here today? The second one is this. What does a rad dad do, right? A rad dad restores and celebrates. Restores and celebrates. Remember, the son came. He's looking from a great distance. The dad saw him. He ran to him. He loved him. He kissed him. The son repented. And and listen to what what, what the dad said. But his father said to his servants, Quick, hurry, don't delay. Bring the finest robe in the house. Put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and the sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And so the party began. All right? So the party began. You see, what a rad dad does... They restore. They know how to celebrate with their kids. Look at what the father did. The father gave him four things. The father gave him the finest robe. Remember, he came from the pig field. He had nothing. He squandered everything that he had. He was starving to death. He was malnutrition, right? Malnutritioned, right? He came up. He didn't probably look like he did when he left. He was filthy. He probably stunk. And the dad said, give him the finest robe. Listen, I want you to give him a ring. What kind of a ring did he get? Oh, just a little, little bling, bling. No, he gave him back the family seal. It was a signet ring. A signet ring was the symbol of the family's voice. Boom. He restored him back to sonship. He restored him back to his place. He gave him clothes to wear. He put sandals on his feet. And what did he do after that? He fed him. He gave him 
nourishment. He gave him strength. You see, a rad dad will restore. That's what God does. God is in the habit of restoring. The problem is many times in this world, we have a, 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 a terrible time restoring, but we, boy, we can point fingers and negate. We can negate. Even at someone's very best effort, we will hold somebody to their past life and their past experiences. Don't, don't we do it? Don't all of us do it? When someone uh, leaves you or some, something happens, you can hold them back to the way they were even 20-some years ago. Well, I remember them in college. Hmm. Something's never changed. What, are you crazy? Everybody changes. Everybody changes. And that's what a rad dad does. A rad dad comes in and he restores to that proper place. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, what does it say? And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. God supplies them. That's what this father did. This kid had nothing. He had absolutely nothing. But he came in and he supplied him all of his needs. In Psalm 51 verse 10 it says this, Create a pure heart in me, O God, and renew a steadfast within me. Uh, do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. And it says this, Restore to me the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And that's exactly what this father did. He restored him. He not only, listen, think about this. The four things, you remember the four things that he gave him? He gave him a, the finest robe, not any old robe. He gave him the finest robe. He gave him the family seal of a ring. He gave him sandals for his feet and he gave him food in his belly. What do you think all that stuff brought to him? He was expecting to be a lowly servant and the dead saying, uh-uh, come up here with me. Now, now you're back home. Let me tell you something. Joy filled that boy's heart. Joy filled that boy's heart. He was flooded. I'm sure he was flooded with all kinds of emotions that now everyone was glad that he's back. It didn't matter what he did. It didn't matter what he said. It didn't matter what had happened. It didn't matter that he was, he, he was at the lowest point in his life. Let me tell you something. God has a great way. Good dads have a great way of taking your children from being the lowest in their life and elevating them and bringing them back up and encouraging them and giving them the things that they need to succeed. That's what a rad dad truly does. Lastly, this. And I love this one. Rad dads reject rejection. Reject rejection. Luke chapter 15, verse 25. Let's look a little bit farther into this story. So remember, let's, let's cruise through this. Son got the money. Son went to the disco ball show. He lost all of his cash. He got hungry. Famine swept through the land. Boy, I wish I could have something that the bacon was eating, okay? And so he came to his senses. He came to his senses, and he was like, listen, this is stupid, and I'm being stupid. I'm going back home, and I'll take a job as a hired hand because even they live way better than this. The dad saw him coming from afar off. The dad ran to him. He kissed him. He loved him. He embraced him. He had compassion on him. The son repented and, and, and said, listen, give me, give me the, the, the horrible job. The dad's like, forget all that. Listen, bring the finest robe, bring the ring, bring the shoes, bring the food. We going to party now because my son was dead, but now he is alive let the party begin. But listen, not everyone will be happy when there's restoration that takes for, comes forth in your life. There will be people that want you to stay back in the other place because now you get in the spotlight. You know, they're, they're getting the spotlight over there and, and now it's taken off you. You ever said this? 
Man, I'm the good kid. Right? I'm the good kid. And then you start, listen, someone, this will ring with somebody, and then you start listing all the things that you haven't done, but the things that they have. Hello. Right? We do that. But a rad dad will always reject rejection. Look at what happened in Luke chapter 15. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. And when he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. I'm sure they had some 18 speakers, man. It was like, wah, wah, wah. I'm sure they had it going on. And he asked one of the servants, what's going on here? And the servant said this, your brother's back. Your brother's back. He was, he was told, and your father, he's killed the fattened calf. We're celebrating because of his safe return. And in verse 28, you see the true colors come out. The older brother was angry, and he wouldn't go in. We're going to call him Pouty Patty. He ain't going in. I ain't going in there. And his father came out, and he begged him. But he replied, after all these years, I've slaved for you. I've never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. In all that time, you never even gave me one goat for the feast with my friends. You see, true jealousy is flying up. Jealousy. Jealousy. Arrogance. Pride. I want the attention. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. You see what he's doing? He's pointing out all his wrongs. And he's starting to point out all of his rights. Boy, I think some things have never changed, Teresa. Isn't it? It's called entitlement. Entitlement. We're entitled to cell phones. We're entitled to, you know, entitlement. And it's based upon what we've done or what we've not done. And someone else gets the props that we get angry over. You see, he was more concerned about his position than his brother's position. He didn't have any idea. The dad thought he was dead. The brother thought he was dead. He didn't know he had been with prostitutes. He didn't even know. Unless he was right up in the house with him. We like to point out what other people are doing, yet we do the same exact things. Hey. But what does the father do right here? After he's had his tirade, this is what a rad dad does. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you've always stayed with me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead, and now he has come back to life. He was lost, but now he was found. He completely shut down that rejection. He completely uh, negated that kind of rejection, because now we've seen a miracle. My son is back. It doesn't matter what he did. And aren't you glad that's how God looks at you through the precious blood of Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad that your sins are no more? Good grief. Thank you, Jesus. God covers our sins. And not only does he cover it, he washes our sins. He washes our sins and makes our sins gone and as white and as pure as snow. He washes those things away from us. And that's exactly, you can see where the enemy comes in. The enemy comes in and says, oh, but look at what they did. Look what they did over here. Look what they were saying over here. And he tries to point out all the bad things because he he knows. Let me tell you something. He got a record of wrongs because he'd ride up there with him. He wants to point out his job is to seek, kill, and destroy. But this dad caught on to that really quick. He caught on to that and he rejected the rejection. And our Heavenly Father does the very same thing because the enemy, what he is, he's the accuser of the brethren. 
He'll come in and He'll tell things about you. And then He'll lie even more to give you, to, to give you even worse of a name than you already have. Philippians chapter 3 says this, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing. I forget the past and look forward to what lies ahead. Forget the past. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. Forgetting what is behind. Forgetting what is behind. And pressing on to what's in front of us. That's what a rad dad does. He comes in and he rejects rejection. Last scripture is this, and I close with this. Can you imagine? Because when we when we read God's word, we just see words, right? You've got to put you've got to put life to those words and understand. When this father saw his son coming from a great distance away, he was filled with love and compassion, and he ran to him. He ran to him. He saw his son coming, and instead of saying, he blew all my cash, he blew all this, and now, he can come and find me. He knows where I live. That's exactly what happened. No, that's not what happened. What happened is that he came in, he chased him down, and he wrapped his arms around him. And I can hear this in Matthew. I can hear him, him say this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me. That's what the Father does. The Father rejects rejection. The Father runs to us. The Father restores us to that rightful place that we should be in. But the the Father also, what He does is he, He chases us down. He runs to us and not away. And I will tell you this, in my life I struggled with that. I struggled with that because my earthly father ran away. And I attributed the attributes of my earthly father to my heavenly father and I couldn't understand. It was hard for me to comprehend why God would want to chase me down and wrap his arms around me and love me. Couldn't understand it. But I will tell you this. There is no understanding that we have, no twisted thinking that we have that can change the reality of who he is. He says to you and me, come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you rest. Are you tired? Are you weary? Come on. I got what you need. There's some good dads in this life. But there's a difference between a good dad and a rad dad. A rad dad goes completely against the thought process of how the world does things loves unconditionally. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad I have a Heavenly Father that will meet every single one of my needs. Right? Amen. Bow your heads.